Welcome, welcome! It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you a new Star Citizen video. And we're going to talk about Inside Star Citizen for August 11th, 2022. This is all about ships. Why is it about ships? Well, Monday starts the annual ship showdown where the top 16 ships in Star Citizen or favorites or whatever you want to call them uh, fight it out to see which one is the favorite of the people, the community, the star citizen, citizens uh, in the year 2011, which is actually going to be, what, 2051, 52? I don't know. You get the idea. So you're going to actually get to vote on all these different ships uh, that they enter into this ship showdown. And uh, I, for one, am in favor of the Grey Cat PTV winning this year. Uh, so <clears throat> definitely fly that, drive that as much as you can over the next few days so that it gets entered. So let's move on to what Inside Star Citizen has in it. Starting off with the Drake Corsair, this is a ship that I know a lot of people are looking forward to. A lot of people. Uh, Star Jump Grim loves this ship. K9 in my organization loves this ship. Uh, you know, th this is a ship that is going to be probably an Andromeda killer. The Constellation, I'm sorry, an Aquila killer, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. But it is definitely in that vein of ship. It's an exploration ship. It's about that same size. It's able to carry a rover. Uh, you know, it, you know it, it can't carry another, you know, snub fighter like the Aquila can. But it's definitely that type of ship. One of the cool things is they've already finished the remote turrets on this thing. It's in final art. As you can see, it looks really great, uh, though I'm not a big fan of that, you know, OD green or whatever. Uh, they've also been working on the landing gear to make sure that it's functional. It looks good. Uh, you know, it's not going to tip over uh, when, uh, you know, the ship lands. Now, it could with a strong wind like this Herald just did. <laughs> but let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, it should be pretty well balanced. Uh, now, they do show us a lot of the crew quarters here, and the crew quarters look great. I wish they would have shown us a little more of uh, the rest of the ship, but they just wanted to show us the crew quarters because I guess these are what is done in gray box, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, it looks pretty close to final art to me. I mean, that looks really good. Uh, what do you guys think of the Drake Corsair internals? Now, they also worked on the ramp going into the back of the ship. Yes, this is the back of the ship. This is where you can fit your rover. Now, let's ask, I want to ask you guys, you're flying a Drake Corsair. Are you putting a rover in it or are you putting loot in the back of it? I have to ask because Drake is known as a pirate type uh, company uh, where they cater more towards pirates but uh, you know this is an exploration vessel are you gonna put a rover there or are you gonna put some loot that you got from ganking somebody let me know in the comments uh i mean i'd use it with a rover but that's just more my gameplay style uh so you could see that it looked a lot like what the cutlass looks in the back uh, the, of course it's drake it's going to it's going to have a lot of the similar artwork same thing with inside the caterpillar uh, so something to get used to. Now they did go back and add the wings to that first little sprint that they had done. Um, now they wanted to make sure the wings would be aerodynamic, that they would be functional, that they would work the way that they're supposed to. That they have these little doors here uh, that will adjust the wings. So it's pretty cool, uh, pretty ingenious design. Now it should it, it should fly hopefully balanced. Uh, like I said, they needed to be uh, somewhat balanced in flight even though it's asymmetrical in shape and how do you do that well i mean that's i'm i'm not the aerodynamic scientist so i couldn't tell you but anyways they, they have people that would do that and they also made sure or want to make sure that the wings will fit in the current hangers the way that those are set up without like you know shearing them off when the hanger closes as they land uh, next thing up, they talked about the Argo SRV. This is the tow truck of the Verse, or the tugboat, or, well, you get the idea. Uh, this thing actually looks pretty good already. Um, I, li I like the way that it looks. They did make the cockpit a little bit bigger because they were having a problem with uh, 
uh, people getting up out of the seat and not having enough space to move around. So they had to make that just a tad bit bigger. Uh, they made the Corsair a tad bit bigger too. Not uncommon. When they start building these ships, they grow a little bit in size. Uh, they did borrow some stuff from the Argo raft. And Jared makes some funny remarks that all rhyme with raft, aft, shaft. You get the idea. I'm not going to go into any more of those. But it looks pretty sharp to me. Uh, you can see it's got the landing gear here sorted out. Um, yeah, it looks like an Argo ship for sure. And I have a bunch of these, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how they work, how how much they can, you know, tractor along with them, how all that's going to function. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And then you, you, the bell of the ball, always, the Banu Merchantman. What it's looking like right now, and it looks pretty sharp. They made sure to show you the correct uh, field of view. Last time they showed a field of view and it looked like it had a duckbill in the front. And they got thousands and thousands of memes about the Duckbill Merchantman. So they are definitely working to make sure the Merchantman looks the way it's supposed to. And then they also talked about Salvage UI. Uh, so they're going to have, of course, different UI on the screens on your HUD when you're doing Salvage stuff. Just like they do for mining. And, you know, it's going to have all the pertinent information that you're going to need. The power of your laser. Uh, the speed of the hole stripping, etc. And then they worked on visual effects for it, which, by the way, I am not a fan of these visual effects yet. Hopefully, they'll look better by the time they come out. But we do have a long time until 318 when this is due out. Uh, so, yeah, they shut off the vulture a little bit. They shut off the reclaimer doing some salvage work a little bit in one of its turrets. And then they want to go into showing us a little bit something else so gimbals and this is going to be something that's going to be a very contentious subject the bigger the gun on the gimbal the slower it's going to move or track at least that's what they're kind of playing around with so what that means is in the future if you have a size 3 gun mount they may be letting you use a size 3 gimbal. So in other words, fixed guns may be a thing of the past if they get this in the game. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. <coughs> I don't understand why exactly they want to do it this way. I mean, I understand the bigger gun should have probably a little bit slower tracking rate, but they could put better machinery on there to have faster gimbals, which they did talk about a little bit. Uh, this is going to be something we're going to have to talk about more in the future, maybe in depth in the video. Let me know what you think so far in the comments down below about the whole gimbal situation. Again, I'm not a huge fan of uh, getting rid of fixed, which they didn't say specifically they would do, but I know that's what it would lead to. Uh, anyways, they also talked about going into the hammerhead and they redid all the power conduits and got all the uh, components and stuff in there because it didn't have the component routing and all that in uh, before. So they've gone back in and done that. So we're getting closer and closer to that multiplayer gameplay where, you know, your components are going to have to be checked up by an engineer, maybe replaced mid game or, you know, mid fight or whatever. Uh, so they're, they're trying to get as many ships as close to that as possible so that that gameplay becomes available when they're ready for it. And then the last thing they wanted to show us is how building blocks can be used in other varieties of ways throughout uh, the verse. So pretty cool. But guys, let me know what you think of this Inside Star Citizen. Uh, there's controversial subjects, some cool stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I really do appreciate all you guys tuning in. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy, and I'll see you out in the verse.